but this is what what happened uh, you know miracle because because i had some master class from another teacher who came to give a master class to pula and she told me for the first time i heard oh my god you're so talented no one told me i, I was talented you know hello hey how's it how's it going great how are you I'm doing awesome. I'm actually watching the countdown for your music video as we speak. Wow. It's That's at a cool. minute and 30 seconds until it starts. Nice. <laughs> got a lot of people waiting around for this. So like a bunch of comments, like thousands of likes already uh, on the video. Pretty crazy. It's like a movie premiere. It is. It's it. <laughs> I've got this rad graphic and it's counting down like as, yes. as I'm sitting here. <laughs> we need a popcorn. Yeah, right. <laughs> uh, well, I'm Adam, and I appreciate you you taking time, especially away from your premiere, to, to do this That's right now. Um, Where are you now? I'm in Nashville, Tennessee. Oh, wow. Yeah. And musical, musical city. Yeah, I'm actually originally, I've only been here a little over a year, originally from San Diego, California. So um, moved here a little over a year ago and love it. My family and I moved here. We, we absolutely love it. But um it's all about you and your story today. Uh, so this podcast is about you, your journey in music. And we'll talk about the the album, The Player, that you just released and uh, what you have coming up. Cool. Cool. Uh, first off, talk to me. We're born and raised Croatia. Is that what I read? Yes, yes, Croatia. Tell, tell me about that. So Pula is a small city by the coast, the beautiful Croatian coast, known as one of the most beautiful sea all over the world you know a lot of mm -hmm. tourists come every summer so i was lucky to be born in such a nice surroundings and grew up in the nature and uh, yeah i'm always happy to come back home every time i have you know free to visit my parents mm -hmm. are you so you're close to the coast yeah yeah, yeah yeah okay did you go out uh to the ocean pretty often or no yeah all the time i grew up on the ocean you know swimming uh, fishing uh, Climbing the rocks in the wood. I'm like a, from the jungle. I'm like Tarzan, you know? <laughs> oh, that's awesome. <laughs> uh, amazing. And I, did you come from a musical household? Yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, from very early age, my mother would put in classical music. And I was so lucky to be influenced by the most amazing music from early age. And this is what shaped me to who I am today, you know? Mm -hmm. I was listening to Beethoven symphonies when I was only a few years old. All those masterpieces, Bach, Beethoven, Brahms, Chopin. So I was lucky to grow up in these artistic surroundings. And my father used to paint, do a lot of mosaics. My brother plays trombone. He's a conductor. My sister used to play violin. She was a music critic. So yeah, it was all, always arts around us, you know? Wow. And where so do you land with, with your siblings? Like, oldest, youngest, middle, middle? I'm the youngest. Youngest. So were your, your siblings already doing music before? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was the last one. Even my oldest brother first had attempt to start to play cello, but he just didn't. It didn't work out for him. So okay, okay. Yeah. Hey, what was the first instrument you learned, and how old were you? Do you remember? Actually, cello, because oh, when I was, cello. I was, I heard it on the radio when I was a really small boy, and I just fell in love with the sound, the, this warm, beautiful sound that touched my soul. Even that I was so early so young i still felt this special vibration so mm -hmm. so i asked my mom to that i want to go to school and start learning cello yeah it's such a beautiful instrument my, my it's my wife's favorite instrument oh, uh man. but did you you always always cello you never played violin or anything like that it was no, just no. always just straight to cello yeah because it's this those kind of instruments are very demanding you have to like focus all your time mm -hmm. and energy to learning those instruments you cannot just you know I mean, you can do it as a hobby, but if you want to do it on a high level, you have to. They're not going to be yeah, nearly as good as you are. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, wow. Well, so have you always just played cello then from the first instrument you learned? Yeah, I mean, I can play like... for fun. For fun, I can play piano, you know, guitar. Oh, I'm um, sure. Yeah, you could pick up other things, but it was always been when you picked yeah, yeah, up the course. cello, you knew that that was the instrument that you were going to continue yeah, playing for sure. forever. Yeah, forever. Amazing, amazing. And were you in like the school band all the way up and up through what elementary into university and everything yeah i mean uh, when you start playing cello first you learn classical music only for many many years you have to you know it's like uh, you have to learn all those uh, basics you know it's actually boring it's like you know you have to do a lot of exercises scales etudes 
sonatas, concertos, and then it was only many years later, after I was 25, that I started to do something different, you know. This is oh. how two, this is how two cellos was born. We started to, you know, do some, uh, you know, <laughs> improvisation. Let's do something else. Let's try something crazy. Let's do pop, rock, and... But you have to first learn the basics. You have to have this patience and discipline for many years. It's like becoming a professional athlete, you know? You have to right. sacrifice your childhood. You have to be dedicated for a long time. Mm -hmm. And from an early age, like at what point do you realize that you're obviously very, very good at your instrument to the point where you, like, were you getting validated early on from people like, oh my gosh, like, you know, he's so, he's so good. He's like this insanely good celloist. Like, did, were you getting any of that at an early age? No, actually at early age, not so much. It was because actually I started to learn when I was eight and then I lost really interest because, you know, kids will make fun of me in the school, you know? Because everyone is like a football player. Everyone is, you know, it's oh, not, yeah. it Sports wasn't really and, cool. Yeah. It wasn't right. cool and popular to play cello, you know? No one even knew what cello is in, in my city, you know, here in Pula back then. Uh -huh. But And then I almost gave up. But I, And I almost finished. It was like end of my elementary school. And my mom told me, play just one more year. Just finish the, the elementary school and okay. But this is what, what happened, uh, you know, miracle. Because... Because I had some master class from another teacher who came to give master class to Pula. And she told me for the first time I heard, oh, my God, you're so talented. No one told me I, I was talented, you know. So someone had to come from another place to tell me how talented I am. And this is where I got so much motivation. And I start playing and practicing like crazy. And I improved a lot. And that's when I really fall in love completely so it was like 14 15 year old which was the crucial moment and this is actually i think for everyone the decisive moment what's gonna be your future you know around right. this age. yeah just imagine if she wouldn't have came into the class and no, said how great you like, were i it mean it was a that, destiny yeah yeah do you ever keep in contact with that person or have you have you seen yeah, them yeah, since? Yeah. i saw her a few times later but you see how important is encouraging word in the right uh, time mm -hmm. for uh, someone you never know you can change someone's life, you know, with one word. Yeah, that's fascinating. And yeah. what about like, because you, from what I read, I believe that like you and Luca were in the same class. You knew each other growing up, right? Is that before two cellos oh, yeah. started? I mean, we were both from same country, playing the same instrument, same age. So we knew of each other. We were like, a, consider each other kind of rivals, you know? Who is gonna oh, he was the other really good cello player in town. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Okay. Always, always this kind of tension. We were following each other. You know, it's like Ronaldo and Messi. You know who? Uh, oh, playing. sure, sure. Yes. But then we joined forces many years later, and there's an explosion. You know. And when did that happen? Like, at what point did you both decide, hey, we should instead of going against each other, let's, yeah. let's team up <laughs> and uh, you know create this super group? Well, yeah. When we met the uh, first few times, there was such a this strong tension and chemistry, and this. You know competitiveness but in a healthy way we also were mm -hmm. friends from the first moment so we were like and we were both playing with so much adrenaline passion energy and we were actually both criticized for that because it was like uh, because you know they will not put you in the box when you're in this classical music uh, world yeah you and have to look a certain way yeah. they probably have a yeah. certain posture play a certain yeah. way and we were both crazy we would always lose control on stage and go and we were always like talking imagine if we join forces that would be crazy that would be crazy and we've been talking about it for many, many years, but we never would meet in the same place in the same time. And it was many years later that we were finally mm -hmm. together in London where I was studying. And then he came to study there too. So it was like perfect opportunity to, you know, finally unite. Okay. Wow. Well, at what point do you start kind of, was this pre, you know, two cellos, you both like you start taking on some of these pop songs or like these rock songs and just trying to learning them in their in their pieces on on cello no, we were both only focused on classical music for many years going to different competitions master classes you know and we tried to make a career out of this but it was really you know classical music it's not what it used to be it's not really it's hard to you know make yeah. it in the classical right. music world and this world is so like limited, full of rules, full of um, so many things. And we were really fed up and we were like rebellious. We were like, let's do something different, something exciting, something crazy. Let's attract wider audience to cello. Let's just come up with something revolutionary. And that's what we did. We just then start discovering 
other music out of classical music you know this was actually the first time that we were paying attention to what's going on out of classical music and crazy oh, were you, so you were only really listening to classical music as well yeah also we were like i mean we knew of course we knew about some songs that everyone knows about but we were not really paying too much attention and then i was like i was actually completely into classical music that i didn't even know anything out of classical music and i was like who do i know out of classical music and i was like oh i heard of michael jackson i heard of that guy so, mm -hmm. so i typed michael jackson on youtube and the first song that popped out was smooth criminal <laughs> And I was like, wow, let's try this on cello. And that was it. You know, it sounds crazy, but it's true. Oh, my gosh. So that was the very first one you guys did together. And then you had yeah. the YouTube video, right? That just went That's wild. It. I was like, it happened like this. Like, it's insane. No one would believe the story. <laughs> <laughs> so you what? You decide to put, you, you find you find out that you guys could play. You know, you find this Michael Jackson song. And you're like, yeah. hey, like, let's do this together. And then yeah. you work out the parts or is it like yeah, and it all to... happened so quickly, like it all happened in five minutes. We did the arrangement through Skype at the time and we were like, OK, let's go record. Boom. Everything just happened. Do, do, do. Next next day, everything happened to uh, to us in a big explosion. And we only had this one song. We only had this one uh, uh, like uh, thing that we tested for the first time. And it so just went it. wild on YouTube, right? I mean, so, like, you what? Go to your computer the next morning, and it's got like, like yeah, a crazy. ton of plays. So imagine you've been trying to succeed in classical world for like twenty years, and then you uh -huh. do one thing out of classical music, and just everything just explodes the next day. And you're like, <laughs> what is going on? <laughs> and we just had this one song, and everything happened. Elton John called Sony, Ellen DeGeneres, all these TV shows. It became so crazy, and we were like, we only had this one song. So we went then, okay, let's let's now find the next song. You're like Google. Yeah, at that point, you're yeah. like, like, how do you find these other ones? Did you just look up like, hit, did, or did look yeah. at some of these songs also? Because it sounded like you were just like, oh, I know. Yeah. Jackson, let's see. Yeah, the funny thing is we were just thrown into that world. I mean, we were like discovering, you know, on the way, like, oh, look at this, look at that. It was like songs that everyone knew. But for us, it was fresh. It was new. And it, and it, it actually played the important role because for us, it was all so exciting, exciting, you know. We were discovering mm -hmm. rock and roll. We were discovering pop. So we approached it with so much enthusiasm. So it was amazing. Wow. Yeah. I know. And some of the songs that you all cover and, and you cover yourself is are like ones that, like, I look at the title and I'm like, like when I come around from Green Day, I'm like, will this work? And cello? Like, I don't understand how this. And then I watch the performance you guys do. And I'm like, oh, my gosh, because you pick up every element of the song. Yeah. And the way, like even with the vocal part, like you can hear it, obviously, in the in the melody of what you're playing. But like little parts of the song, I'm like, oh, my gosh, like you're able in a lot of covers you won't hear. Right. Or like, you know, it's in the recording, but. If a, a four-piece band does it, you're like, oh, okay, that's probably just like a little thing that they added in later yeah. in the recording. And it's like, you guys are bringing all of that out, all yeah. of it to life. Like, yeah, I think it's so cool. Like some of the decisions you make, like, 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 yeah, for that one, for example, it's like, I would have never guessed in a million years that would sound cool or yeah. hurt. Yeah. But the, when you do hurt, like, whoa, it, like it's just mind blowing. Yeah. There were so many misconceptions that we just, you know, we, no one could ever imagine it, that cello can sell out whole arenas, you know, the touring, uh, all this <laughs> craziness. We were just like, we were going for it. We just, you know, we did, we believed. We believed in a miracle and we just, it, it crazy. It all happened. It's like a dream. So once the, once, you know, Ellen's calling and, and Elton John and obviously, like, obviously your name's getting out there and you're kind of at this point, what, trying to find other songs that will work? Yeah, like, yeah, it okay. was crazy. Like, so it was very stressful actually because we were like only one song and suddenly all this everyone expects now a full album a tour everything it was crazy uh stressful period so we had to come up with so many new things in such a short period of time so we were like 24 hours a day like this in studio coming up with arrangements and searching for the songs discovering new things <laughs> you can't imagine <laughs> no <laughs> Just having that musical ear and being the both of you being so talented uh, and hearing something like Smooth Criminal, like you could probably pick out the notes pretty easily. Like, OK, yeah. like you do. You, when you hear something like that, are you able to just kind of hear it? Like, OK, yeah. you could figure it out pretty fast. Yeah, luckily, we had this uh, rigorous the classical training. So we had uh -huh. big discipline. We were trained so strict, you know, 
proper. And so this is why we could actually adapt to this new crazy life and we could actually survive this pressure either from the very start. Mm -hmm. So we were lucky to have this incredible experience from the past. And of course, yeah, as soon as you hear the song, you know exactly if it's gonna work on cello or not, especially if it has a great melody, you know, because cello is such a melodic instrument, but also these certain riffs, rock riffs that you know, oh, this is gonna rock on cello. Some rhythmical songs like hip hop, you can't really do on cello. How are you gonna, how yeah. are you gonna do it? <laughs> the other, yeah, the only exactly. thing that you can do, yeah. But I mean, like the Muse cover that you guys do. I'm like, oh my yeah. gosh, like this is so crazy. Like, yeah, just hearing it. And you played here in Nashville not that long ago. Yeah, I, yeah. Yeah, like there's, I mean, you play in like these massive arenas, like Bridgestone and like, you know, like that's, that must be such a wild thing to think of. Like crazy. coming from a YouTube, like a Michael Jackson cover to now you're yeah. you're selling out arenas. Like that's this so is what crazy. We are, this is what we are most proud of because you have a lot of these YouTube sensations, internet uh, sensations, people with a lot of followers. But this means nothing until you really make people buy tickets, sell out arenas, tours. This is what we are most proud of because this is something that is most difficult to achieve, you know? Yeah, and just the passion. Like when you said the way you guys play together, like you know that you just have so much passion for the songs and yeah. to see that play out, it's like, oh my gosh, like this is so wild. Like, I, I, yeah, it's, you guys are doing something so unique. And I love that, that, I mean, with the, the album that you got, you just put out with the player. I mean, the song yeah. choices are so cool. Like when you started, did you, you were already into cellos when the first solo album came out or was that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. So what made you decide on, on doing a record of your own? And were, was that just like song choices? Yeah, because so I was always doing my own things as well on the side during the two cellos. But now I'm, uh, because this is our last tour as two cellos. Now I'm taking fully a solo career so because we were uh, so our show was so spectacular on stage in the terms of like we were rocking out it was so so crazy intense passionate people going wild it's, it was like a real rock well, show. Like a rock show yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's crazy. so now when i'm alone i'm like okay we, i can't do rock because first of all we are not two cellos anymore it's a different concept but i still want to do something that's dynamic that's gonna make people dance go crazy and and I was thinking a lot, what could I do? Of course, apart from classical music, romantic music, all these ballads, um, soundtracks, this is all good on cello that I do. But what could I do to have the same impact on stage that people go crazy? And, and I think Latin music is something that everyone loves. The whole world mm -hmm. is listening to Latin music and dances to Latin music. And I was always um, loved this uh, rhythm, this uh, passion uh, in uh, Latin music, the fire, the movement the dance the, and i thought wow this could be something and i also have this latino kind of latino blood in inside of me as well me, mm -hmm. people when they see me they think i'm spanish or you know sure. anyway so so yeah it was actually natural to come to that conclusion so now i also have opportunity to really make a crazy exciting show with all this uh, ryth rhythm stuff and everyone go crazy and dance uh, and, and these are all the songs that are well known from also for younger and older generations. Everyone knows those iconic Latin uh, evergreens. Yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And w when it came to ch song choice, was that like, 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 how do you, how did you make decisions? I mean, like the Living La Vida Loca cover is so cool. Yeah. <laughs> like... yeah. So those are those songs that everyone knows, you know, younger people, older people, and everyone wants to stand up and dance to it, you know, Waka Waka, mm -hmm. the same thing, uh, Let's Get Loud, same thing. Everyone knows those songs, Sway. Yeah. And there are some songs that are very old from 1950s even, but I want to make them more accessible. Like, uh, accessible yeah, like now. Hipper. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah kind of so, your own hip spin on them. Yeah. Wow. And you're doing with, with, with the player you have, uh, well, the video, I just, I, I ha kind of had it on so I can kind of get a little grip because oh, cool. we was premiering and I'm like, okay, like we're talking oh, right. like right as this thing is going out. So like, <laughs> tell me the concept is like very, it's, I love how it was shot. It was like black and white. And then you're playing, you know, kind of in this beautiful hall. Like wh where was that all filmed? And like, tell me the concept behind the video. So this was filmed in a castle in Hungary. Oh, wow. And we wanted to recreate this kind of a James Bond vibe, you know, because arrangement sounds. Oh, like yeah, it does have that vibe for sure. You have the tuxedo and like Bass yeah. and Martin James and like, Bond. yeah, yeah, it's OK. Yeah, so I'm uh, James Bond movie is actually a story about my life. So 
<laughs> yeah. Uh, and so, what was that with the like? What made you decide on that? It was just just a fan, and and then like, how does that relate to the best of me mucho? Because the vibe, the arrangement sounds really like in this kind of vibe, James Bond vibe. So we were like, oh yeah, let's also shoot the video in this same uh, mood and style. Mm -hmm. And of course, there is a Bond girl as well. So everything. Yeah, is there. I just I didn't notice that. <laughs> the only the only the only thing it's missing there is no guns and no violence because my weapon is the cello and the bow. Oh sure, okay, I like that. <laughs> That's much better, you know. It's a good yeah. message. Actually. It is a good message. I like that. And yeah. when it comes to like you, you've played solo shows in the past, like prior to this record. You have other albums out under as a solo artist. Correct? I had a classic album, uh, which was uh, amazing because classical music is something that is like always it plays important uh, role in my life because mm -hmm. everything started from classical music, and I wanted to make one classic album where I included all most beautiful classical melodies and they all mm -hmm. they all sound amazing on cello because cello is such a beautiful melodic instrument and those iconic melodies none of them were written for cello originally but when you hear the album you think like wow this should have been written for the cello you know at the first right <laughs> i feel like that's how all the songs that you guys do sound yeah. and that you put out sound <laughs> I'm like, whoa, bad guy Billy <laughs> Eilish like I can yeah. get behind this cello version. <laughs> you know what yeah. I mean? Uh, was that a difficult choice, make, like to make choices on the songs that you wanted to choose for this? Because you held, you know, classical music so high up, and like, and like, so you're so prideful of it. Was it hard to pick which songs you wanted to use for that, yeah. and how to kind of arrange it? It was difficult because there were just so many beautiful iconic melodies, and how do you mm -hmm. limit yourself to only, you know, as many as they fit? We chose as many as it fits to the album, you know. But <laughs> I could make hundreds and hundreds of melodies like this, so it was. But they will be classic two, classic three, classic four. You know, I want to do in the future more classical music for sure. Okay. And was there like a, a bigger, like, did you have a lot more songs that you had to kind of dwindle down to a smaller yeah, set? Always. That's actually okay. the biggest problem that I have, the selection, because anything works on cello, really. Right. It all yeah. sounds good. <laughs> <laughs> And then kind of figuring out which ones you want to actually yeah, yeah. release and, and, and present. And did you do, um, th is that the record? Did you do that like a record with the London Symphony Orchestra? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Oh, no. What was it like working with them? And was that always a, like a goal to have? Like, where, yeah, did you want, was that your, like, when you were finishing school and, and you, as a kid, was that where you wanted to end up before yeah, kind yeah, of yeah, no. the YouTube thing happened? Yes, because London Symphony Orchestra is considered one of the best in the world, you know? Right, right. And to one day play with them and record an album, it was like, wow, you couldn't even dream of this um, years ago, you know? And now it all happened. Crazy. Yeah. Like, b before the two cellos thing began with, with the Smooth Criminal cover, what was, like, what were you hoping to, like, what was the career path that you were looking for? Was I mean, it to play with them? Yeah, of course, but especially because I was studying in London and I mm -hmm. went to listen to the concerts of London Symphony. It was like, wow, imagine if one day, blah, 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 you know, but but actually this dream uh, dream became true a few years later, which is crazy if you think about it. But I always believed, I always, I was visualizing myself. I was uh, so confident about my uh, future, you know, I was always, I was so focused and I knew it's it's going to happen. You know, it's very important to have a, this belief. I just keep going and believe in your dreams. Never give up. Mm -hmm. I mean, especially from the, the where you got to play with them. And, I mean, instead of being like first chair in the in the orchestra, it's like you are the, the focus that yeah. is being kind of uh, just accompanied by yeah. this this the symphony that you that you aspire to be in now you're kind of you're the yeah. center of it and everyone's playing around and with you it's crazy that must have been a huge feel yeah a great yeah. feeling to have and responsibility because it's not easy to come in front of all these uh, hundred professionals who are really good and you know you have to like you have to you have to do it well otherwise <laughs> right yeah you have to come really yeah. prepared right like because they're gonna they know everything and you have to like be on a really high level. So it's also a big, uh, actually pressure a little bit. Uh -huh. Wow. And then, and then doing that, were there 
moments that you're like, okay, this, hopefully this works or I, like, you yeah. know, is this, should I present this? Like, did you ever question yourself? Yeah, but actually they were really nice and supportive and they showed so much, you know, good uh, feedback and support, mm -hmm. which mm -hmm. was, was very surprising because also as a two cellos, we record one album with London Symphony score, the movie teams many years ago. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And we were scared because we were like, okay, there, there must be, you know, classical snobs. They will look down on us. But no, actually, when we arrived, they were really like, they were the fans. And we were really surprised by their reaction. Because this was the beginning of YouTube. It was beginning of this. Uh, it wasn't really common to do those, those experiments, you know. We were one of the pioneers of, of uh, going viral on YouTube at the time. So it was a totally new thing. Now, of course, it's more common that everyone tries to do what we did, you know, but back mm -hmm. then it was like a new thing. And we were surprised that how well it was received also by uh, professionals and, you know, people in the industry. Yeah. And with that, that first album, with the, with the London Symphony Orchestra, the one that you put out, your, you know, your album, you weren't able to tour it. So you had to do what, like these covid friendly shows or like the alone yeah, together I mean, things that must have been I announced, kind of a bummer. I announced the tour and it was sold out and i was so excited and then it was canceled because of the, the pandemic the situation and then i had to come up with different concepts and yeah i did this alone together series which were so well received because everyone no one could travel but at least they could watch it online all those concerts and uh -huh. so i did three alone together concerts which were a huge success and uh, and also Morricone tribute to yeah. the composer. So actually, you know, I couldn't travel and play, but I had time to dedicate myself to different projects, which was amazing, actually. So you see, you can always do something with, regardless of which situation you're in. Mm -hmm. And my number, my classic uh, album became number one, you know, in the, on the charts to, in the pandemic, you know? So it's wow. like, it's crazy when you think about it. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> and have you then done a show just because uh, you just did the two cellos tour? Have you played just as as Hauser as yourself? No, it's I just announced that today we announced the ticket sales. Yeah, I did see that. So yeah. um, one show is already sold out, man. <sighs> Quickly. <laughs> but like, right. yeah. To have, do you have any like like going in as just now? It's just you. Yeah. How are you? Is that going to be different to approach these shows? Oh, it's going to be totally different because on two cellos tour, it was just me and Luca, you know, mm -hmm. two cellos and we had a drummer for the second part. But now I'm alone and I'm going to have 25 musicians behind me in the band. So I'm going to have a string section, the brass section, the rhythm section, keyboard, the piano, guitar, bass, uh, the, the percussions, drums. It was just so many people and it's going to be a huge spectacle. And I'm going to start a little bit, you know, slower with some classical tunes, some soundtracks with the strings only. Uh -huh. And then the second part of the show I'm, is what I'm trying to achieve is this crazy Latin party where everyone will just get up and dance to those great songs, you know? So mm -hmm. a little That's bit of cool. everything for everyone. Yeah. Are you are you nervous or anything in, in, in the aspect of like playing these things yourself? No, I'm not nervous because I... I feel so natural on stage. This is where I belong, you know. I right. feel most comfortable on stage. And uh, I'm just curious and excited to see how will this show work out because never I've never done it before. So it's exciting. That's so cool. I love watching your guys' live videos. I mean, the, the spinning of the cello and then catching it and just like <laughs> just like literal rock stars with this instrument that you would never, I mean, I wouldn't in a million years assume could be played that the way the way that it is yeah and the, and just like having the the distortion on it like just coming yeah. up with these little things like those are probably like that had to all be through you guys i mean not i'd never heard of anyone else doing that prior yeah people uh, didn't know what cello is capable of for many years you know because even in classical music world cello is not considered the most popular instrument you always have a piano or violin or you know whatever mm -hmm. and we and we always were knew the cello can do so many things that it is limitless you can really treat it like an electric guitar you can treat it like an acoustic guitar like a harp like you can play mm -hmm. highest violin lowest double bass you can hit it like percussion there, there is nothing you can't do on the cello and it's actually the only instrument that you have so many possibilities and but no one has really showcased it in that way before 
and we never really understood why so we were like that's it's time you know to really yeah. make cello cool all over the world and now young all young kids want to learn cello you know I know. Yeah, that was super inspiring. I'm like, wow, like this no. is the coolest instrument. I wish I knew how to play yeah. it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, congratulations on the, 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 the video coming out today, the tour, the yeah. album. Cool. Um, and hopefully you'll come out to the States. I know you're just here with two cellos, but uh, yeah. you have the tour in Australia and obviously in the UK, or Europe coming up. Um, yeah. But I appreciate your time today. Thank you so much for, you, for doing this. I have one more quick question before I let you go, though. I want to know if you have any advice for aspiring artists. Yes. Yeah, so the most important thing is to, especially now in time of uh, social media, it's not to imitate others. Just find your own voice because now it's easy. They see something is working, something is successful, and now they want to apply this to their own. But you have to find your own way of uh, making music, your own language your own style so just try to be original and listen to your voice your heart your uh, instinct don't copy you know others Bring it back,